ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one I have that happy people have to pay. Eating our Wheaties, and do, 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 and okay, oh. Hi there. This is the Lone Ranger speaking. Out here in the West, we have a couple of champions who are really doing okay. Champion Bob Maynard. He can grab a thousand-pound steer by the horns and toss it to the ground like it was a three-day-old calf. And bronc-busting champ Bob Burroughs. The way he can stick on a mean, sidewinding bronc, you'd think he was glued to the saddle. They're both great rodeo champions and both eat Wheaties. Have been ever since they were youngsters. That's a good example to follow. Keep on eating your weenies and you'll be doo do do and okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hooray! In the town of Orville, Tom Turner's general store served as the community post office. The weekly mail had arrived that day, and a number of men, including the marshal, were reading letters. Tonto, who had ridden from the Lone Ranger's camp to buy supplies, stood near the counter awaiting his turn. The young man ahead of him said, Tom, is there any mail in the Blake and Webb pigeonhole? Yep. Your boss is at the bank. Get a heap of mail. Here it is, Joe. Thanks. Now, Ingen. What's it? Well, look who's here, old Mose McCoy. Hi, Mose. Where have you been keeping yourself, Mose? In the shack near Warbonnet Pass. Well, listen to me, you old deadbeat. Your credit's no good. You've owed me $100 for two years. And yes, say the word, Tom. Now run the bummer out of town. Now take your hands off of me, Marshal Crane. I'm here to pay that debt. Here to pay? I don't believe it. There's your hey, money. Look Five double eagles. Quang. Well, I'll be doggone. Joe, you work for the bank. Tell me if these coins are genuine. Well, let me see. They sure are, Tom. Mose, who'd you rob? I didn't rob anyone. I sold a mine. What? You sold a mine. <laughs> now I've heard everything. It's called the Globe Mine. It's just an old worked-out tunnel. I won it years ago in a poker game. Two greenhorns gave me $1,000 for you it. You swindled them. I didn't. I told them there was no gold left in the digging. Then why'd they buy it? How do I know? Said they were going back east, and they made me promise I'd clear out of the territory, too. Yeah, why'd they want you to clear out? Dad, ready, Marshal, I don't know. I was glad to get the cash. And now that my debt is paid, I'm clearing out. <laughs> Sounds like a mighty odd deal. Well, it's good enough for me, and so's this money. I'll stand treat for all you dead. You better stay here, Ingen. I'll be back in a minute. Um, me wait. Come on, boys. Follow me to the back room. Just a minute, Mose. Right. Come on, Mose. Might as well have a free drink. He'll be there, Marshal. I want to talk to him for a minute. Well, make it fast. Did you say that was the Globe Mine? Yeah, it's at War Bonnet Pass. What are the names of the men who bought it? Well, they call themselves Brown and Smith. One is a tall, lean gent with gray hair and side whiskers. Yes? The other is short and chunky. That's all I know about them. Now let's go to the back room. Uh, you go ahead, Mose. Uh, I have to hurry back to the bank. Well, suit yourself. Oh, don't you want to join us in the back room, Injun? Uh, thanks. Me, wait here. That night, Sam Blake and Zach Webb, who had opened their bank in Orville during the past year, conferred in the bank office. Blake was a tall, lean man with side whiskers and cold eyes. 
He frowned when his short, heavily built partner said, Sam, that man who sold us the Globe Mine was in town today. It, old Moge? He agreed to leave the territory. Well, he's gone by this time, but he stopped in town to pay a grocery bill. While he was in the store, Marshal Crane saw him talking to Art Keller, Joe Daly. <laughs> Say, that may account for Daly's actions after he returned with the mail. Huh? What'd he do? When he thought I wasn't observing him, he went through the loan and mortgage records. Well, those records are all in order, Sam. They convinced the bank examiners that everything was all right. The bank examiners in this territory aren't very smart, but if Daly examined the papers on the Globe Mine... If he did, he knows we loaned a lot of money to the new owners. But, Sam, he wouldn't know we bought the mine, loaned the cash to ourselves, and kept it. He'll suspect as much if Moe's described the buyers. And even if he doesn't suspect we're the buyers... You wonder why we made a large loan on worthless property. Well, that old fool. Why'd Mose have to come to town to pay that grocery bill? We didn't anticipate that, Zack. Now we must face the issue. Daly is suspicious, I'm sure of that. He asked for tomorrow off. Said he wanted to go hunting. I think he plans to ride the war bonded pass to examine the globe. Well, let's take what cash there is and clear out. No, Zack. Did a good thing here. Let's work it for all it's worth. But Joe Daly. Dispose of him. Huh? You know how to use your gun? Oh, uh, I see. Follow him tomorrow. If he goes to the globe mine, shoot. While the bankers confer, the Lone Ranger and Toto camped in the hills beyond the edge of town also discussed the sale of the globe mine. When Toto finished telling what he'd heard in the store, the masked man said, Most thought those men were greenhorns. Ah. I doubt that. Uh, what do you think, Kimasabi? Either they have information that the globe is valuable, or they wanted the title to the property so they can sell worthless stock. We may know more after we see the mine. Uh, Kimasabi, yes? there's no way to warp on its path. All right. We'll go there tomorrow. <laughs> The next day, shortly after noon, the Lone Ranger and Toto reached the top of a hill overlooking the valley called Warbonnet Pass and halted their horses. They saw the ramshackle hoist and tumbled down tool house of the abandoned mine near the foot of the hill. Toto, there's a man near the shed. Ah, me see him. Him look like fellow me see in town. Him work in bank. You mean Joe Daly? That's right. I wonder what he's doing at the mine. Him shot. Someone fired from behind that pile of rocks over there in the valley. Ah, uh, me see gun smoke. And their man, he aim gun. The Lone Ranger's quick shot made the gunman duck behind the pile of rocks for cover. Keep him down while we ride to the wounded man. Come on, sir. Come up. The gunman's victim staggered a couple of steps and dropped behind the shed, while the Lone Ranger and Toto, dashing downhill, maintained gunfire at the distant rock pile. Their bullets gave the unknown ambusher little opportunity to return the fire with accuracy. Oh, oh, he's just me color. When they drew rein and dismounted beside the fallen man, the shed cut off the view of the rock pile and the dry gulcher. See what you can do for that man, Toto. I'll take care of the other. Uh, Miss Abby. Holding his guns in readiness, the masked man stepped into the open, but held his fire when he saw the distant gunman riding away. He had a horse with him behind the rocks. Shoot. He's too far away. Let him go for now. We'll attend to this man. Him, Joe Daly. He's regaining consciousness. Uh, wound on sight ahead. Seems to be no more than a flesh wound. That's right. My head. Steady. You'll be all right. Well, your mask. And you, Indian. I've seen you before. Ah. Me in store yesterday when you talked to Mose. I remember. Uh, mask friend, Lone Ranger. But Lone Ranger? Huh? Then you didn't shoot me. No, you were shot from ambush by a short, heavily built man. He rode away. Zack Webb. He must be the one. Who, Who is Zack Webb? He and Blake operate the bank in Orville. I work for them. Do you know why Webb tried to kill you? Well, uh, I might guess. Tell me while Tonto dresses your wound. Tonto told me about the sale of the Globe Mine. He heard old Moe describe the buyers of the worthless property. Tell me the rest. Well, the descriptions fitted my employers. Then I remembered that Blake and Webb had made a big loan to the buyers, referred to as Brown and Smith, and had taken a mortgage on the Globe as security. I wanted to find out if the mine is as worthless as Moe's thought, so I took today off and came here. Is the property worthless? Yes, and I know Blake and Webb were not accepted as security for a mortgage unless they kept the depositors' money. I'm sure that's what they did. We 
We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get Go Power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. Joe Daly's statement that his employers were involved in a crooked scheme made the Lone Ranger realize that there would probably be another attempt at murder. He said, Now, what are your plans? I don't know. If Webb tried to kill you, he must have known what you suspected. His partner may have seen me looking at the records and realized that I was checking up. He might have sent Webb to get me. Oh. Is there a lawman in town? No. Well, well, there's Marshal Crane, but he's more like a private watchman. He's paid by public subscription, and the bank contributes most of his salary. Otto, there's a federal marshal in Red Rock. You better go there and tell him that Joe Daly has something to report. Uh, what do you think I should do in the meantime? Return to work tomorrow as if nothing had happened. Watch for the chance to take the Globe papers from the file and hide them so they can't be destroyed. The following morning, before the bank opened for business and before Joe Daly arrived, Sam Blake entered his office. When he saw that Zack Webb had already arrived, he spoke angrily in a low voice. Zack, you lied to me last night. I lied? Yes. You told me you shot and killed Daly. I did. I aimed straight at his head and he dropped. Well, I just had coffee with him in the restaurant. What? His head is bandaged, but he's coming to work as usual. But I shot him. Why didn't you make sure he was dead? I couldn't. Just after I shot a masked man and a redskin came down the hill firing at me. I had to clear out. Uh, what did Daly say about his head? Well, not much. He just said he'd been hurt. He saw the mine, Sam. He knows it's worthless. He'll make trouble for us. He might make a lot of trouble. Who do you think the masked man is? I don't know. Maybe a crook or a private detective for the insurance company. Gee, Zach. Did he ride a white horse? Yeah. And the Indian with him rode a paint. Oh. That masked man might be the Lone Ranger. What? It's possible that he and Daly are waiting for us to make an incriminating move. Like what? Like running away with the bank's money. And, and Zack, we'll let them think that's just what we're doing. We'll see that Daly overhears us planning to leave town on the train tonight. Taking the bank's money with us. Are we really going to take the money? No, of course not. But Daly will think we are. He'll tip off the masked man who tried to catch us with the stolen money in our possession. I don't say that. We'll tell Marshal Crane we're taking a business trip. And that we have reason to believe a masked man intends to rob us. We'll ask Crane to follow us until we're safely aboard the train. When he sees the masked man stop us... Mm -hmm. uh, now <laughs> I see. <said. laughs> what about the Indian and Daly? We'll take care of them later. I, I heard the front door. I think Daly's right. Good. We'll start beating the death trap for the masked man. Early that evening, Joe Daly went to the Lone Ranger's camp and reported on Blake and Webb. Those crooks know I'm wise to their game. What's more, they suspect that you're the Lone Ranger. They do? Yes. So they're going to clear out of town tonight on the midnight train. Before they go to the station, they'll stop at the bank and fill their carpet bags with money. Are you sure? Yes, I overheard them talking. Joe, did you get the Globe records out of the pile? Sure thing. I have them hidden in a safe place, but it'll take a lot of investigation to make a case against Blake and Webb. Yes, I know it. Simplify things if we can catch them with stolen cash. What are you going to do? I'm going to make sure that Blake and Webb don't leave town with stolen money. As midnight approached, Sam Blake and Zach Webb, each carrying a bulging carpet bag, mounted the steps to the deserted platform in front of the Orville Depot. The only light came from a smoky oil lantern. 
hanging from a bracket on the depot wall. Marshal Crane's keeping out of sight. Oh, so is the mass man. I'm wondering if he's going to take our bait. I'm sure Joe Daly heard what we wanted him to hear. He probably did. But we don't know that he took. Jack. Yeah. I see him. He's coming this way. I want to talk to you two. Huh? A mashed up, Law. Don't shoot, mister. Don't kill all our men. Uh, take what you want to spare our lives. Relax. I haven't drawn a gun. I'm not going to hurt you, and I want nothing that belongs to you. You hast your hands, you're covered. Where's your cream? I've been following you, gents, but staying out of sight in the darkness. Keep your hands up, mister. This is a killer. I'm not a killer, Blake. You are, too. You were about to murder us. Take it easy, gents. Mister, you back up. Stand against the depot. Keep your hands high. Mr. Webb, you'd better take his gun. Yes, I'll sure enough do that. Yeah. I've got his gun. Oh, Crane, no. you're holding your gun on the wrong man. He'd shoot the masked man, Crane. He's a notorious outlaw. He's wanted dead or alive. Blake, that's a lie. Sam Blake's telling the truth, Crane. You're in line for a big reward. Shoot the masked crook. Don't take chances on his getting away. And all gone, why are you dead so eager to have me shoot a man in cold blood? He's a thief. A killer. He was about to rob and murder us. Yeah. Didn't look that way to me. It confound you, Crane. Do as we say. We pay your salary. I admit you pay most of it, Mr. Blake. But that don't mean I shoot to kill on your say-so. Good for you, Crane. You'd make a first-rate marshal. I, I am marshal. In that case, I'll tell you why I'm here. And why I approached Blake and Webb. Uh, don't listen, Crane. He's a slick liar. He'll convince you he's not an outlaw. He might even try to tell you he's a special detective or the Lone Ranger. Are yeah, you through talking, Mr. Blake? Well, I... Then give the masked man a turn. Go ahead, mister, but remember, I'm holding a gun on you. Crane, I have reason to believe Blake and Webb are absconding with the bank's money. But, Quill, of all things... Even if we were doing that, what's it to you? I'm a friend of Joe Daly. and share his interest in the welfare of the bank and the depositors. A likely story? Blake, are you and Webb willing to empty your carpet bags so the marshal may see the contents? It would be a simple way to prove that you're not leaving town with the bank's money. Very well. I'll dump this bag. And here goes mine. The contents of the carpet bag spilled to the station platform, and in the light of the lantern hanging on the wall over his head, the Lone Ranger could see that, much to his surprise, there had been no money in the bag. See for yourself, Crane. We have nothing but clothing. <clears throat> You're right, Mr. Blake. Do you want us to turn our pockets inside out? No, no, Mr. Webb. I reckon you couldn't carry the bank's money in your pockets. I'm surprised that you have the intelligence to realize that, Crane. Now, what do you say, mister? Very and I still insist that Blake and Webb have stolen money from the bank. Investigation will show how they made big loans on worthless mines. Loans to non-existent people. More lies. Joe Daly knows about their operations. That's why they tried yesterday to murder <laughs> Daly. Now he's accusing us of being murderers. Potential murderers, Blake. And I'd like to know who you are, mister. And I'll tell you. I'm known as the Lone Ranger. <laughs> I told you he'd make that claim, Marshal. My horse is on the other side of the depot. He's Snow White and his name is Silver. You'll find silver bullets in those guns Webb took from me. By Juniper, if that's the case... It uh, is. Open one of those guns, Mr. Webb. Take out a cart. I'll do it, Webb. Give me one of the guns. All right, Blake. Cover the mask, man. I'll cover Crane. What? Drop your gun, Crane. Mr. Blake. Stop it. Stand still, mister. I'm covering you now, and I'll shoot faster than Crane would have. Webb, Blake, what, what's this mean? It means, Crane, that your usefulness to us is ended. It means that the potential killers... Are about to become killers, in fact. You should have shot that masked man when I told you to. You see, Crane, to protect themselves, they wanted you to kill me. But they may are crooks. Yes, and now they, you know it, they plan to kill you. And later, they'll have to kill Joe Daly. But they'll not get away with it. You see, they overlooked one thing. Oh, we did, John. Well, what did we overlook? The fact that, standing here as I am, I can reach this lantern. <laughs> As he spoke, the masked man pulled the lantern from the wall and threw it at Zack, who fired wildly as he tried to dodge. That's him, Crane. Yeah, yeah. At the same instant, the Lone Ranger leaped forward, grasped the gun Blake held, and brought a hard fist to the banker's chin. Right, take it! Oh, count me in! Are you? I'll fix you! The lantern had gone out, but Crane didn't need light to deal with Webb. He closed in, knocked aside the gun, then put all of his pent-up hatred for outlaws into one mighty blow with his right fist. Webb dropped like a log and lay motionless on the platform. Crane turned quickly. Now, for now... Oh, I see you've taken care of Sam Blake. Yes, Crane. He'll regain consciousness soon. I'll try the two of them. I'll pick up my guns. Is there a jail in Orville? Yes, and it'll hold these critters. You're coming. Who's that? My friend. 
Here, Toto. Station platform. Toto, I've heard of him. Same as I've heard of you. Someone's riding with him. I think Toto's bringing the federal marshal. Oh, Toto. Hello, hello, hello. Get in here. Here, Marshal. Keep him coming. Good. Uh, you got two summer. Marshal Crane's already placed him under arrest. Uh, but I'm not a regular lawman. I reckon the real marshal better take over. Crane, you'll be a real marshal someday. Would he make a good one? Yes, Marshal. I'm sure of it. Otto, I'll go get Silver and meet you in camp. Our job's finished. Uh, oh, wait, wait, mister. I'm you... here, Crane. It's a job for you two lawmen. <laughs> lawmen? Gosh, Mr. Marshal, do you know who that masked man is? Yes. You? Yes, sir. And I'm mighty proud of the fact that I've fought hand-to-hand -hand against a couple of crooks with the Lone Ranger. I'll tell Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.